Welcome back to the Fearless Future podcast. We're your host, Glenn. And Amber. And today, we're going to talk about negotiating. And specifically, we want to talk today about negotiating to buy houses cheap and some, you know, that's how we make our money. We make our yeah. money when we buy and people don't realize that. Right. That people are like, well, I make my money when I sell. You realize it. Realize your money when you sell. When you cash the check, it becomes real, but it's not real. If, if you don't buy the house right in the first place, there's no money to collect. Right. So if you buy the house for too much money, there's no money to make. It's so like you, the old adage, buy low, sell high. It is. But yeah. you, you have to know what you're doing. And I think people underestimate the power of being a great negotiator. How do you buy low? Yes. So got any thoughts on negotiation before we jump in? Because I've got, some, I've got some, some tips I want to give people as we get started. You know, as we built our business, this was definitely more your lane than it was mine. I dealt sure. with all the project management and contractors and design. Yeah. So th this will be mostly you, babe. So here's what I will tell you. It is by far the highest per hour profession you could ever have. Sure. Because I don't care if you're in houses or if you're selling cars or if you're selling, it doesn't matter what it is, whatever you're selling, you could literally, especially in houses, you could literally have a 10 minute conversation with somebody and lower their price by 30 or $40,000 or $50,000 or $100,000, depending on what size of the project you're doing. So think about that. If you were to make $50,000 in 10 minutes, and that's just 10 minutes of an hour, that's a pretty healthy hourly wage, right? Yeah. And, and is it worth it to you to be a little uncomfortable to do that? Because negotiating can sometimes, very oftentimes, as it mm -hmm. should, push you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah you yeah. always tell our students, you know, if your sweats aren't, if your palms aren't sweaty, <laughs> then your offer's not low enough. Your offer's not low yeah. enough. You know, you should be nervous about that offer. Yeah. If you're not terrified and feel like you just want to puke all over everything, if you're not, if you're not completely out of your comfort zone, your first offer is not low enough. It needs it needs to feel insulting. But in this podcast, I want to teach you how to not make it insulting. Right. right. But but it needs to feel so bad that you're way out of your comfort zone. Right. Because you can if you if you don't start low enough, you you can you can always go up. But, but you, you can't, you can't go, down. go down. Yeah. So uh, what I wanted to say a minute ago though was, you have to decide whether that discomfort is worth you know, maybe paying $50,000 less for the house. So that's right. kind of a good way to like force yourself into that. You know, yes, I'm going to be nervous about this. Yes, I, I, my palms are sweaty. I'm terrified to make this offer. I don't want to insult this person. But, you know, that could be a $50,000 payday for you yeah. if you do it right. So you got to kind of kind of weigh that out. So yeah. I think maybe we get a little kinky for our audience and uh, do a little role playing. The heck are you talking about getting kinky with our audience? <laughs> Let's do some role playing. What kind playing. of a podcast is this for God's <laughs> sakes? Oh my Lord, what are you talking? What do you want to do? So I'll be the seller and you be the buyer. Let's negotiate. You be the seller and I be the buyer. Yeah. All right. Tell you what, let's give an example first of a couple we've done and, okay. then, and then we'll do that. So, they, right. have, so they have a little context. Sounds good. Did you want to put me on the spot today? I didn't know that was yeah. coming. So that's okay. Let's. Let's I like putting that. you on the spot. You're good Let's, on the spot. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm good at something. Here we go. You don't hear that often from your wife, <laughs> so that's good to know. Okay, here you go. So let's talk about the house. There's two I want to talk about. One is the house across the street from where we used to live in New York, right? That's right. now an Airbnb, one of two on that street. That we own. That we own. And I want to talk about that negotiation. So before I start, I want to say that a negotiation each party has a number that they're okay with, and both people should hurt a little bit in a negotiation. True. There's, it's always it's about the art of compromise, right? Yes. You want to find the number in the middle that you're both comfortable with, and sometimes you can find common ground. Sometimes you can't find common ground, and if it's not low enough, if it, if the deal doesn't work, you have to be able to walk away from it. But it's important for you as a negotiator to say, "I want to go as low as I can," because if you're buying a house, you want to go as low as you can. The person selling the house wants to go as high as they can. So someplace in the middle is the common ground that you have to find as a real estate investor. Yeah. And I think that people just automatically mm -hmm. get nervous when they think about negotiating because they think about, you know, when they're going to buy a new car and dealing with a salesman and, sure. you know, they, they're, they, they have that preconceived notion about it. But if you think about your life, most of us negotiate on a daily basis. You're negotiating with your spouse. You're negotiating with your children. You're negotiating with your parents. I mean, we, we you know, children are master What would I ever negotiate with you about? I couldn't even imagine. Ha, ha, ha. Aren't you cute? <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> Go ahead. Continue on. But, but 
you know, children are master negotiators. They don't take no oh, for an answer. Oh, they are good. So they wear you down. So we have this, you know, self-limiting belief about negotiating. When if you realize it, you know, if you really look at it, you're probably a lot better than you give yourself credit for. Yeah, I think that people. So let's back up before I tell you this example. I think it's important to set the tone here. The one good thing about being a negotiator is you have to be a good listener. Mm -hmm. You have to ask questions and you have to listen. We want to be the aspirin to their pain. Yes, 100%. If we have to find out what is the thing that is the, the biggest motivator for you to sell that house. And you're trying to find a win-win. 100%. And we're, we're trying to find a spot where they're happy and we're happy. We, we both hurt a little bit, but we find that common ground and we both say, okay. This okay, is that good. makes sense. That sounds fair. Right. And so you want to find that, that common ground. And again, there's, there's leverage points that you want to look for and listen for. So here's where we can role play. So if I, what are you, the seller? I'm the seller. And I'm the buyer. Yes. All right, let's role play right now. I have a really dilapidated house that I've inherited. Got it. So I talk to you, I call you up, I say, hey, Amber, yeah. Amber, hi, this is Glenn with Signature Home Buyers. How are you today? Ah, oh, I'm stressed. Yeah. Listen, I know that you got the mailer from us and you called and you wanted to have a conversation with us about selling your house. And I wanted to uh, to ask you some questions about, is that okay if I ask some questions? you have a few minutes now? Sure. So how long have you had the house for? Well, I just inherited it. My my uncle passed away and there's nobody else in the oh, family. And now I've got this headache to deal with. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I want to fix it up and try to sell it or, oh, it's just, I'm, I don't know I'm, what to do. I'm real sorry about that. How uh, were you close with your uncle? I was. Uh, I'm real sorry for your loss. And Thank that's, you. That's, I appreciate that. That's, uh, that's losing anybody is very difficult. So um, let me ask you this. Do you have any siblings you're dealing with? Is it just you that inherited the house or are there other siblings? It's just me. So you make all the decisions on the house? I do. Married? Yes. Do you have an amazing husband who's really, really handsome? He's kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> he sounds like a wonderful guy. <laughs> anyway, so I, I would just wonder, does he have to be part of your decision making or is it, would you make it on your own because you inherited the house or how will this all work? Yeah. I mean, you know, we always talk about everything, sure. but the ultimate decision's up to me. Okay, great. So do you mind if I ask you a couple questions about the house? Sure. And I'm not trying to be intrusive. I just kind of want to know, you know about the house so I can figure out what my price might be and then we'll go from there. Okay? okay. So, so tell me about the house. Is it, is it a little run down? Is it in good shape? Is it, you mentioned that you have a headache. So I'm, I'm curious what's going on with it. Tell me what's going on. It is. He was, he was a bit of a hoarder. You know, there's a lot of stuff oh. in the house. It needs a lot of work. It's very dated. You know, the kitchen's probably from the sixties and the bathrooms are okay. probably equally as old. And, okay. you know, I just, I just, the, the roof needs replaced. The windows are old. Okay. At it just the, seems like a lot. Yeah, a lot of work to do. So let me ask you this question. What would you say is kind of the thing that you really are dreading the most out of this? This this whole process. We try and make the process really easy for you. So what is that you're dreading the most out of this process? You know, probably the clean out, because I think that's mm. going to take the longest, having to sort mm. through everything. And um, sure. that that seems very emotional, too. And, you know, I don't have anywhere to store this stuff. Yeah. You know, my, my house is full and yeah. I, I don't know what to do with all this. And then after that, it's all of the, the stuff that'll need to be done to get it ready to be sellable. You know, of course I want to make as much as I can on the house, sure. but I also don't want to deal with a headache. Do you, do you live near the house or where do you live in, in proximity to the house? I'm about an hour away. So it's not necessarily mm, an easy, right. easy journey. It becomes a bit of a hassle. Right. Right. I, I understand. Yeah. It's, it's tough to do that. So. Um, is that, that the most important thing to you is, is kind of ease of the transaction? That's up there. Okay. Is the money, I mean, you mentioned money just a minute ago. You, so you, of course you want to get top dollar for it. Um, is that the most important driving thing for you or is the whole process? What, what's kind of the most important driving thing would you say? You know, if, if somebody made me an offer, I couldn't refuse. I wouldn't say no okay. to, to not have to deal with the headache. Okay. So, but I don't want to give away for a song. Either. I understand. No, I totally understand. I hope, yeah, no, I, I hope that we can come to terms. I'm sure that we can because we do try to have win win scenarios. Obviously, we can't pay top dollar. We're an investor. So, we look, can I tell you about my process and what we do and sure. see if it makes sense to you? So, our process is this we're going to come in to the house. We're going to make you, once we're going to, once we, I'm going to ask you some more questions. Once we determine a number for the house, um, I'm going to come into the house and I'm going to handle everything. Like, you don't even have to go back if you don't want to. What we tell people is this. You go back and take whatever you want. Take whatever you want out of the house, whatever things that are important to you, valuable to you, things that you know have great memories, whatever you want, you take that for yourself. I could even help by having a U-Haul there. I could have some guys come help move the things out if you want to, whatever makes it really easy for you. And then you leave and we do the rest. 
anything that we can donate to charity, we will. Uh, the rest of it, we will get rid of. We'll dispose of whatever, however we have to dispose of it. And then you can wipe your hands of the whole process. You get your money at closing and that's it. And you move on. So you, you get your money first up front and then we handle all the headaches. I guess is my point. Like you just take care, take what you need and leave the rest to us. We also don't ask for any inspections of the house. Once we do a walkthrough and take a look at it for ourselves, we're not going to have any professionals come out for inspections. We're going to look at it ourselves, make that determination. Um, you know, you're not going to have a thousand people traipsing through your house and making comments and trying to nickel and dime your closing with credits. We're going to come up with a number and that's the number you're going to get. And we're going to make this process really easy and simple for you. So far, does that sound like something that you, that works for you? Sounds interesting. Okay. So let's talk about numbers for a minute. <clears throat> so do you have a number in mind for your property? Make up a number. You know, I, I, I did I did look at some comps on Zillow. You know, I don't really totally know what I'm doing there, but I did look at what some other local houses are going for. Sure. And, you know, I know it kind of depends on how nice the ha house is. And sure. this one's in a little bit rougher shape. So, sure. you know, I was I was hoping around eighty thousand. Right, eighty thousand dollars. Okay. So um I tell you what, before we talked, I kind of looked at the the address. I sort of looked up. I didn't know the condition of the house, but it sounds like it needs everything. Is that, would that be fair to say? It needs yeah, a new kitchen, new bathrooms, new floors. Is there anything major? Does it need a new roof? It does need a new roof. New roof. Do you know if the furnace is in, in good shape? It's probably old. Okay. So, so that may need to be replaced too. So it sounds like all the majors need to be replaced. Do you happen to know about the electrical panel? Do you happen to know? Did you happen to notice or do you know is that is that up to date, current with breakers? Is it fuses? Is it? Do you happen to know that? Honestly, I wouldn't even know what I'm looking okay. for. So I have to sort of figure that that's probably something that we'll have to deal with also. Do you know if it's on septic or sewer? No idea. Okay. So again, in that area, most of them are septic. And so if it has not been dealt with, there's a good chance I'll have to put new septic in. So from what I'm hearing right now, I probably have around seventy dollars to $80,000 worth of repairs in that house. Mm -hmm. I know you're, probably, you're not in this field like we are, but that's what it sounds like to me. Does that sound reasonable from what you're hearing? For as much work needs to be done on the house. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. And I looked at the numbers here and it looks like when it's all said and done that we can sell the house for around, you know, 180,000 to let's just say $200,000 when it's all said and done. That's just from what my initial looking at the house, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm you, starting to get nervous. Well, don't be nervous. If you, if you want 80 and I have to put 70 into it, you know, you might think we're going to make 50 grand on that, but that's not the case. We have a lot of cost overhead. There's a lot of risk we take. So if we buy the house and for instance, we find a buried oil tank in the backyard, we deal with it. Yeah. Not you. Never thought of that. Right. And if we get in the house, we find there's asbestos that's in the walls. We deal with that. Not you. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we find that there's infestation and there's rats or there's mice or there's bugs in the wall, we deal with all that. Right. So we take care of all that on our own. So let me, let me, let me tell you this. I've, I've, I've run some numbers here and I, I want to tell you right now, I know that you want 80 and I don't want to insult you. I've really enjoyed our conversation so far and I'm going to, I'm going to throw a number at you that is the ballpark I'm in. It's not a final number. It's a ballpark because I'm just, again, we, we haven't finalized seeing the house, but I have to prepare that it's, that's, it needs everything from what you're telling me, right? Yeah. So I think that we're going to probably be in the range of around $40,000. Ouch. Yeah. I, and that I'm not, stings. I'm not finalized yet because I still have to look up some numbers, but if that were the case, is that a number we can work with? Again, I have to go look at the house and make sure that the numbers all line up. But is that, will that possibly work? I don't know. That, okay. that seems really low for her. Okay. I mean, it, it does need a lot of remodeling, I understand. But it's, yeah. still, it's still a house. Yeah, no, I understand. No, I totally understand. We, we take on all that risk and all that. So I, I completely understand. But I wanted to throw that number at you. Let me ask you this question. Because obviously, I've got, I've got to get more quotes from my contractor. And I've got to work on this. But if I, if I can figure out a way, what's your bottom line on it? Let me ask you, you want 80, I'm, I'm, I'm looking around the 40, where, where do you have to be where it's no headache, you literally get money and walk away, take what you want and walk away. What's that number like for you? Just what, what is that number for you? I don't know. You know, if, if all of it was taken care of and I could just walk away and didn't have any walk headache away, at all. No headache. And by the way, we pay all the closing costs. So what I tell you is the number you're going to get. Probably 65. 65. Okay. So that's a little higher than we are, obviously. And I don't know if I can get to 65, but let me ask you this question. If I can get in the 60 range, 
if I can get there? Do you think that's a deal we can maybe put together? I, I'd be willing to hear you out. All right. Let me do this. Let me schedule time to come out and take a look at the house, and then we'll go from there. Is that okay? That sounds fair. Great. Now, get your checkbook out. Get going. Sell me the house already. <laughs> no, don't say that. Look, that was a long way to go through it, but that's that's what a negotiation sounds like, right? Yeah. And so when I'm talking to you, I, I want people to understand that I am softening. I am I'm having a conversation with you. The conversation is everything. I ask questions and I listen about your uncle. I share that I was sad, which I, I don't want anybody to lose anybody. So I feel bad about that. I want to know what your pain points were. And then I'm going to go into how we can solve those pain points. I didn't bring up money till the end. Right. So don't bring up money till the very end. Right. Right. So, and I'm, I'm, I also soften it. So I'm going to soften that, the offer. I'm not going to say, hey, Amber, my offer is 40000 Take it or leave it. Yeah, you always say if you're going to get punched in the gut, at least you can tense up first. You know, if you if you preface the, your conversation yeah. with, you know, I, I don't want to insult you. You know, people can brace for, all right. What do people do? People start having a number in their head right away that right. you're going to hit them with. Right. And they're just waiting to hear it. So I would love to share a couple of real life examples. Let's do it. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. I want to talk about a couple that I remember. You might not remember this. It was a house we looked at in Scotia, New York one time. And we got a phone call from the the buyers we went out it was a referral we went and took a look at it and they wanted uh i think i think their starting number was seventy thousand dollars and i went out and we looked at the house and we sat with the kitchen table you may not remember this we sat at the kitchen table and we talked to them together we told them our process kind of like i just did with you yep. we told my process what we're going to do and they said well we we want seventy thousand dollars and i said okay can we go back and crunch some numbers and I'll get back to you later today and see if we can't, you know, find it and see if, and I think I left, I left there saying, if I can't get 70, is, are we dead in the water? Cause I want to see how firm you are. Yeah. And he said, well, no, let's see what you got. Cause again, everyone has a number. Right. So we got back and I'll never forget this. I was sitting, this is back when we had the double aquariums in our house. Remember yeah. that? And I was sitting behind him, my little desk I had there. And I remember I called the woman and talked to her and I said, so. I've run some numbers. I don't have my final quotes back yet. So, but I wanted to call you before I got my final number because I'm circling around a number that is pretty far off from what we talked about. And I really enjoyed meeting you and your husband and I do not want to insult you. So I wanted to at least call you and see if we're in the right ballpark or not. And I'll never forget her response. She said, well, what's the number? And I said, okay. I'll, and I repeated everything I'm going to do for her. I'm going to make that make it simple for you, make it easy for you. I repeated all the good stuff before I hit her with the bad stuff. I'm preparing her for this the whole time. And I said, "So, remember, we take on all the risks. You know that that uh, that step that septic problem in the back. We're going to take on, take on all that. That foundation wall in the back. We're going to fix that as well. And everything becomes something that we take care of. My offer. I'm. I know you want a seventy. I'm circling around twenty, twenty thousand. And here's the secret in negotiation. You have to shut up. Shut up. Don't say a word. You got to shut up and let silence them, is golden. You got to let them yep. talk first and see what the response is. It's one of three responses. Oh man, that's lower than I thought. Or, oh, well, maybe, I don't know. What, what, what comes with that? They start asking buying questions because right. they want to ask. Or they say, I hate you. You're the worst thing ever. Get out of here. But if I'm nice and sweet about it, yeah. it's very tough to tell me to get the hell out of your house yeah. or stop talking or hang up on me. If we have a rapport, right? So you have to build rapport. So I remember sitting at that table and saying around twenty thousand, and it it was probably thirty seconds, and I truly felt like an hour. Yeah. And I sat there, and she said, "Palms are sweating." She said, "Can you hang on for a minute?" And I said, "Sure." And she put me on hold for probably about two minutes. I remember thinking, "What is going? I want to be a fly on the wall in that house." And she came back and said. Now remember, I was she wanted 70. My number was around 40 I wanted to be at. Right. So you have to go low. And she came back and said, Would you do 25? And I remember saying, you know, inside I'm going, woohoo! Yeah. yeah. But on the outside, I went, Can I check with Amber really quick? I just gotta run one more number. Would, would you mind holding on for just a minute? And I'll never forget putting a hold and said, They'll take 20 for the house. And you went, what? And I'm like, I don't know. Or 25. They'll take 25 for the house. Is that good? You go, yeah. And so I got back on the phone and said, you know what? And so you're always negotiating, right? Yeah. You're always negotiating. So I want to negotiate one more term. So I said, we can do 25,000 if we can sign the paperwork tonight. Can we come back over and do that right now? 
And she said, we'll be here. And we got in the car. You and I didn't have the kids that night. We got in the car and we drove over and signed the contract. Or I went over and signed the contract. I remember that well. And I came back with the contract and thought, baby, but you're always negotiating. Yeah. That's a tip I want to, that's an important tip right now is that you're always negotiating. When you get your number, there's more terms after that. Like, okay, that's my number. Great. We, for me to do that, we have to sign tonight. Yeah. I can't do it tonight. Then we have to sign first thing in the morning. Okay. Or my offer is that I'll do this, but I need you get out in 30 in. days. You always have more negotiation yeah. so that you stay in control of that conversation. And I think it's important for people to remember too, that you can't put a price on convenience. And there, there's yeah. a true value to convenience. And that's why people will sell to us for a lower price. Yes. Because they don't, you know, just like we did in, in that situation and when we did in our role play, there's, the, people don't want the headache. Oftentimes, yeah. especially when it's an inherited house or something that yeah. they've, you know, have back taxes on or, what, you know, it's a hoarder house or whatever. They, if you make it, the process simple and easy yep. so they can legitimately just walk away yeah. with a check, there is a true value to yeah. that. Your, your job in negotiating, though, is to make sure they understand that. Right. Now, you, you also have to make sure it's valuable to them. A hundred percent. Because if you don't, like I was asking you in that role play. What's my pain point? What's your pain point? I, yeah. was, I was saying, what, what do you, what makes this, what makes this a good transaction yeah. for you? What's the hardest part? That and if somebody says it's money, well, then it might just be money. Right. And that may be all their deciding factor. But more than likely, they'll start telling you things like, I don't want to have to clean up. I don't want to have to fix the roof. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have, remember you, in that role play, you had said to me, well, I might fix it up and sell it myself. I didn't even go down that path. Right. What I did was I showed you how much it was going to cost right. to fix it. So indirectly, I already took that bullet out of the gun because you're thinking to yourself, I'm not going to spend 80 grand to fix this house. Well, and, and to the person that's on the other end of that line, in my case, it was me, or in this case, it was me, you know, you do this for a living. So you know what you're doing. I don't. Right. So, so for me, that sounds even more overwhelming and, right. and not just that you're painting that picture that it's more, more overwhelming. It truly is more overwhelming to that person because sure. they don't have a history or those connections or those contractors in their pocket. Of course. So that, that case was a, was a very inexpensive house, 20,000. I remember we fixed that house up. We sold it for like 160,000, made like 80 grand profit in that deal. It was a great deal. Now. And again, it doesn't matter if the numbers are 20,000 or 200,000. It's right. all about the no, it's all about what number works for you in the deal. And the spread. And the spread that you're going to make, right? The house is going to sell for 150 back then. Now that same house if I had to buy it, pay pay 100 for it, it would probably sell for 250. Right. So there's still a, there's still room to make the 100 or 80,000 right. dollars in there. Yeah, it's not like you have to go out and find a $20,000 house. There's two more I want to talk about that I think are really that really explain what the seller feels like after the transaction is done. Because I think people need to know that what that's all about. Mm -hmm. And we've done so many of these that I want to talk about this. The first one I want to talk about is the deal that we did with uh, our investors that we bought over Riggy. there on Riggy, right? And so this is going back. This is our third, third house, house, I think. Third house. So this is 1,151 houses ago, right? Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. That sounds ridiculous, but that's what it is. And so. This particular house, there's a couple different negotiations I want to talk about with this. So this particular house, we uh, found the house by the mail carrier, let us know something was going on with the house. It was very overgrown. There was an order coming from the house. Remember that? Yeah. And so we put our- There were so many shrubs that had grown into full-on trees. Couldn't see the you house. couldn't even see the house from right. the street. So I put, I put our card on the mailbox and I noticed the next day it was gone. And then I put another one and it was gone. So I said, hmm, someone's getting these. And finally, we got a call a week later and someone said, you're interested in buying the house? I said, I am. And we had only bought two other houses before that. And I didn't know much about negotiation, didn't know anything. But I remember sitting down with oh, them. Oh, you've always been a master negotiator, Well, baby. I know. So I went and sat down in the house with them. And I said, okay, I have two options because you and I didn't have any money. Right. This is an important negotiation when you, this is important. No, this is an important tip for negotiating when you're bluffing. Yeah. I didn't have any money. We didn't have any money. We didn't, we didn't know where to hit the money. And they were, they were asking, well, they didn't know what their price was. And so we, we ran the numbers on the house and it needed, needed a bunch of work. But we said, okay, how can we do this? And you and I, actually another guy we're going to buy a house from came up with this idea way back in the day. And now we use it. We call it our JV. Now this is a really important, this is a separate, we have a whole separate uh, video podcast, on, podcast that, yeah. on this. So, so, so JV is joint venture for those right. that don't know. Jo I'm sorry, joint yeah. venture. So yeah. So I'll tell you this, if you're interested in learning how a joint venture works in great detail, look it up on our podcast. We have a great podcast that talks all about how joint ventures work. So make sure you look that up. Okay. Now 
Joint venture means that essentially in a, in a nutshell, you partner with the seller. So you don't give them money for the house now. You agree that you that they're going to give you reasonable access to the house. You are then going to put all your money into doing the work on the house. And then you're going to sell the house and they will get their money at the closing table. And They'll so get the will agreed you. upon price. The agreed upon price. Yes. Correct. Correct. The agreed upon price. So I remember sitting with them and saying, this is going back to 2008, nine, I think it was. I remember saying, okay, we have two offers for you. So this is another negotiation tip. Give a multiple choice close, mm -hmm. right? So it's not a yes or no, it's an A or B. So I said, okay, we have two options for you. We can give you $50,000 in cash for the house right now. Mind you, we didn't have 50,000 cash. So I had no idea where to get the money from. I said, we can give you $50,000 in cash or we can give you $60,000 with our joint venture agreement program. And he said, and what's the next question they're going to ask? What's that? Right. Because they're going to say, well, that's 10,000 more. So I want yeah. to know what that is. And I explained it to him. He said, can we think about it? I said, yes, just can you let me know tomorrow. So no problem. So we left the house tonight and they called back and said, we're going to take the joint venture agreement. And I thought, thank God, because I don't have $50,000. So <laughs> that was when all the loans turned off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nobody was giving money. We're like, uh, I don't have 50 grand. So that's what we did. So as you know, we went ahead and flipped that house. We, we used credit cards to fund the whole thing. We did a lot of the work ourselves too. That was the last house. That was the house. last house we did the work last on. Last house did the work ourselves. But we did the work ourselves. We sell the house. Do you remember at the closing table? So at the closing. Oh, yeah, I remember. At the closing table. Their check was sixty thousand. Right. Our check was ninety three thousand six hundred. Right. Now our profit was around sixty three thousand. We had to pay off our credit cards out of that money. Correct. But nonetheless, our check was ninety three. So they saw both checks: theirs for sixty, ours for ninety three thousand six hundred dollars. Still have that check in a frame. Yeah. That was a. That was a. That was the first time we made ninety three thousand dollars on one house. I'm that like, that was a nice day. Wow. And that was a, that was a big deal. But the negotiations continue because do you remember what you said? I do. They were sitting there with that sixty thousand dollar check, and I said, "So, what are you going to do with that sixty thousand? And they yeah. said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, we're looking for private investors." And we only had we didn't have any private investors at that point. Or we we, were, we had we, Janie. We had Janie. We had one. We had we, had one. we, were, we had one that because we, we had another. We had the house on Putnam under contract. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Yes, we had that. So we so we weren't really sure how the whole program worked. We kind of knew, but we weren't really sure. Right. And then we. We uh, sat down with them and they became private lenders. And here we are 17 years later. Yeah. They are still private lenders. They have their, their. Not only do they have that $60,000 invested with us though. They have a, a huge chunk of their retirement. They yeah. have their, they've, we've helped them roll over their IRA, 401k to an IRA. And they're now, dear they're, people. They send us Christmas cards every year. Oh, I love them to death. Nicest came, people. Came down and saw us in Florida. I, I see when I go home and just, just love them to death. And their, 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 their daughter invested with us for a while. So that. That one negotiation made them so happy that they're investing. Now you could say, well, you paid them fifty thousand to sixty thousand for that house. Yes. Yeah. We took on the risk. Yes, we made a we made a sixty thousand dollar profit in that house. We made more than they made in the house. But that's okay. Right. Everybody they, they were okay with that because they saw how much work that we did on the house and how yes. much we put into it. They were they were never offended by that or no. uh, another thing that you forgot to mention during the negotiations though was part of the deal was we offered for them to come back and see the house Thank once you. it was finished. Yes. And some people will take you up on that and some people won't because they want to remember it the way it was. Yes. Um, but I remember it was a very tearful moment. Well, the house Shirley the, walked yeah, in. The, yeah, and, I remember the, the house had been in rough shape because the mom, the mom had Alzheimer's, had Alzheimer's and it, was, yep. it didn't end well for her in the house. And so it was very difficult. Do you remember that when they came in? Yes, yeah, she had tears in her eyes and couldn't talk for a while. And I, I, I have goosebumps just thinking I about it. I remember I welled up because yeah. I, I saw the whole family crying. We, we stepped off to the side. I'm like, wow. And we realized that moment, what an impact we made on them. So, But for, for many people, it's it makes them feel really good to know that the house that they grew up in and had such great memories has now been brought up to date and a new family can have those new memories in it instead of thinking about it the way it was. Some people are going to want to remember it the way it was and don't want to see it. But you can use that as part of your negotiating yeah. because that that might be something that's really interesting to them and that they want to do it. Very true. And I don't. I, I think it's really important to also remember that people like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Right. And when you become that person, like genuinely, not faking it, like yeah. when you genuinely become that person that they can know, like, and trust, yeah. it's, it becomes a, a good experience for yes. everybody involved. And, and we've often bought houses and even paid less money for the house than a competitor would because they liked us more. A hundred percent. That's, That's happened, happened a lot, numerous times. A lot. 
Yeah, because someone else goes in there all rough and gruff, and they start. They start. You know, this is one. This one. Another little thing about negotiation. If the person tells you that their dad built something in the house, yeah, don't and it's knock built it. In, <clears throat> don't knock it. Number one, and if you can, don't knock it down. Now, yeah. if it's really bad and cobbed together, you're going to have to do that stuff. And it's your house; you can do what you want to do. But if you can keep some of those things intact. And then bring them back and show them that you did that and you kept their dad's memory alive, yeah. which I want to talk about in our next story. Or, or like David and Alicia did at the the house we did the um, big flipping break on, the, the show that we recorded. There was the piece of wood in the kitchen yes. that all the kids' height was was on. And so we gave them the idea, hey, make sure you take that out and give it to the seller. And that was really important to her. Yes. You know, do do those little things like that. Or, you know, their dad planted the tree in the yes. front yard and they don't want to cut down. Have that be part of the negotiation. Yeah. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll keep that tree. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's your house. You can do what you want to do. But if you do those kind of things, then you invite people back to your house and they see that you kept their dad's hutch that he made yeah. intact or you made it even better. Or Bob and Virginia's white picket fence so in front of their yard. So yacht. that's the next story I want to talk about because I want to talk about that now because that's that's the next. So the, that negotiation led to a to a to what's now become a lifelong yes. um, business and friendship relationship yes, with, with them. No, I mean, I was talking about the first story. Oh, the hardwoods, yes. Right? The first story is that that was important to show that those, all those little negotiations led to a lifelong relationship. Lifelong relationship. Yes. That their investment in us over 17 years has helped us to make millions of dollars in profits. Yes. From that first negotiation at the table where I said, do you want A or B? And by the way, I don't have A. So I hope you pick B, right? So, but it, but that relationship has also been equally beneficial to them. Very much so. we've paid them on every single investment Absolutely. that they've ever made with us. And, and they, now, they've turned their same money over Yep. Multiple times. Time and time again. All right. The next story that's really important I want to talk about because I think it has a very funny ending. And that is in uh, the house across the street. So we had the house across the street. You could tell the story about them. I'd like you to tell the story about them because I'm talking a lot. You talk about the, them yeah. as, as people, unbelievably amazing neighbors, 97 and 95 years old when they passed. But go ahead. Yeah. Bob and Virginia, they were just this adorable older couple that lived across the street. They're who we want to be when we get older, right? Yes. They, they're yeah. like our spirit animals. Yeah. They would, he would, he would walk her out to the car. They would come to Florida every winter, yep. but then in the summer, they'd always be back and he would walk her out to the car. Her arm would be holding onto his arm. Her hand would be holding on his arm. And they would go dancing and- They were just, all dressed up. They were all dressed. They were just adorable. Yeah, they were yeah. just the sweetest old, older couple. And yeah. we would go over there and they would say hello to our kids and always greet yeah. everybody. We and the family parties and stuff. Just, yeah, just lovely human beings. And then their their kids who were all over New York State would come and visit them and we got to know them yeah. and just so beautiful family. When they passed away, the family approaches about buying the house. And I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think the numbers were around, we I think we offered around $100,000 for the house. That's right across the street from our house. And I, don't hold me to these exact numbers, but they you get the point with this negotiation. And we've done a lot of houses, so I forget all the numbers, but I think it was around $100,000. Yeah, something like and that. And I, I think, think I said, I'll pay you $100,000 for the house. And this house was nothing wrong. It was, it was a little, little outdated, but not bad at all. It had the white picket fence. Yep. It had uh, that he built for her when a, she was sick one day. Yes, he did. And there was a there's a plaque on the front of the house has his name on yes. it that he built the house. And so I said, I want to keep all that stuff intact. And they're like, Well, it's your house. You can do what you want to do if you buy it. So we start negotiations. Now it's awkward because we let they they were kind of like them. Now they're older. The older sister, the oldest sister who was in her seventies, I think I think she's in her seventies. Donna. Yep, she was the one that came back and. Um, was I think the, she was the executor, executrix, it, right? Yeah. So she was yeah. the, she was the negotiator. The other yeah. the other family were they're all like lovey dovey, and she was nice, but she was definitely the business person. Yes. So I'm like, uh oh, here we go. So I offered a hundred. So she said, let me talk to my attorney. So she came back, and I'll never forget we were in Florida on vacation. I get a phone call, and she said, Hey, Glenn, um, our our attorney has instructed us to um, to counter you at one seventy. And it, remember, it's on nine acres of land. Yes. And all I remember thinking was, there's no way we can make money at 170. Yeah. And I'm thinking, but then I thought to myself, I remember telling you, I said, there is no way that I am letting somebody buy the house across, across the, the street, street that I see from my <laughs> breakfast nook window in the morning every day. There's no yeah. way I'm watching a renovation happen across the street. No way. I said, we, even if we pay full retail, we have to, and I don't even know what we're going to do with the house. We're going to have to get our hands in this house. So I went back. With a, with a lengthy letter and explain why my position is. And I said, and I remember telling you, say, I'm, I'm, we can go to 150, but that's ridiculous. Like that's, we're getting too close to retail. Yeah. The retail might be in the high hundreds, but just, I don't want to go that high. So I came back at 120 
And they accepted. Within a day, they accepted the offer. So when the house gets all done, we're all sold. I remember that she came back to the house one day. She, she, said, she said, hey, guys, you know, love what you did with the house and whatnot. And so she's talking to me. She said, I think I, was, I don't know if she was in front of me or on the phone, but she said, you know, we were all prepared to take your, your offer for $100,000 because we were fine with it. Our attorney knew what you did for a living, and he suggested that we come back at 170. And I'm thinking, freaking lawyers, blood sucking <laughs> lawyers. But he was, he was doing his job. Yeah. And she said, all I remember her saying is, so we'd have taken the 100. And all I can remember thinking in my head was, well, I'd have paid 150. So, <laughs> so I don't know who won that one, right? So, but we met. We both the, won. It was we, a win -win. we did. We met in the middle of the 120. Yeah. And then we turned that. It's still a house we own. Yeah. I've actually slept there. It's an Airbnb across the street. So I've, I've actually had to use it too. But that was a really cool experience. And they know that we kept his plaque on the house. We kept all the character of the house, things that he had built in the house. Yep. Especially that picket fence for his wife. Yep. So we kept all that at the house. And, and uh, that was all part of it. So and they've been back to visit. They have. And they we've, have off yeah. we've offered them to come back and stay at the Airbnb for free if they want to. No one's ever taken me up on it, but they're always welcome to. They're they, just a lovely family. They are just amazing. So I guess I just want to share all that with you that, um, you know, we, we, some, some important points I think to remember is be a good listener, right? Be a good listener when you're negotiating. Be the aspirin to their pain. Right. You've got to be the aspirin to their pain. Find out what their pain points are and solve their problems. It's not always about the math, the numbers. It's not always about that. Yeah. So don't it's often, it's often not about it's that. It's often not about that. So don't assume for two seconds. Have a good tone. Have a good tone when you're talking to people, when you're listening. Don't over talk them. When you and I role played, we just talked. Yeah. And I listened. And then I listened for your pain points. And that was very impromptu. We wouldn't, we didn't plan that, as you know. And so there you go. And the last really important thing is start low. So low that you are really uncomfortable. Yep. You almost want to throw up. You're so nervous making that first offer. Because if they accept your first offer, you paid too much for yep. the house guaranteed because everything in life is a negotiation in real estate. That's where we make our money. So get great at negotiation. Anything you want to wrap up with? Yeah. You know, at the home, it, this just made me think as you're talking at the home flipping workshop, we go through a house, we virtually go through a house room by room and figure out what we can pay. And, and when we always get to the spreadsheet part, you always ask the audience, what do you think, you know, hold yeah. up your hand, yeah. ho you know, how much do you think we should offer for this house? And yeah. some people will say, you know, 80,000 or 60,000 or yeah. whatever. And finally, when they get down to, was it 40 that we yeah, offered? Yeah, well, we offered. Yeah, I say, I yeah, I say, you know, we offered. They're like, yeah, what'd you offer? I'm like, we, we offered 40. Yeah. Like, like, oh, right. I'm like, that's, but, and then we settled on 65. Right. You can always go up. You can't go down. But it, but that, that, um, exercise just goes to show you how much people will offer, but what you can actually get it for if you negotiate. Yes. And, and, and we shared the stories of three different people and two that we have ongoing relationships with to understand that if they're happy and you're happy, even though you're both a little uncomfortable at first, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Like that's what we're trying to do. And remember, you take on the risk. I want to close with this part. And, and and you're solving their problem too. You are. You, you are, like you said, you're being the aspirin to their headaches. So yes. genuinely be a good person yeah. and try to find a win-win in the situation. Yes. But remember, you are solving their problem. You and are. So, so become a good problem solver. But remember this, when you're thinking to yourself, gosh, I don't know if I can go that low, you take the risk on. If literally you buy that house and all of a sudden you dig up Jimmy Hoffa in your backyard. You're going to deal with that. Or find a buried old tank, which has happened multiple times. Many times. Us. We've buried old tank. Or you're on an Indian burial ground. Right. Our house in yes. New York, they dug up a skull when, yes. they were, when they were doing some work there before we bought it. But right? So yeah. there's crazy stuff that happens on properties. And you are liable for that. Uh, it's your property. So once you own it, if there are bugs that have taken down all the two by fours on the mm -hmm. end of the house and it was just being held up by a couple of nails. Remember the house that we bought that we thought it had a new roof because it was winter time and there was snow all over the roof and we looked just uh, on the edge of the garage. Uh, and for some reason they had added one foot yes. overhang on the edge of the garage. So we thought the whole house and had that a new was roof. New. And the rest of the roof was old. Yes, and bad. I forgot that. Remember that? <laughs> Gilderland, I think. Yeah. I, I climbed up on a ladder <laughs> yes. and I'm like, oh, this roof is all new. The foot, the yes. one foot section we could see, that was the only new part. The snow melted a week later after we owned it. I'm like, you've got so to we, be kidding we me. Inherited Remember that? that problem. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. No one, no one was really forthcoming about no. that. I think I asked how long the roof was. Oh, look, the roof looks new. 
Uh, yeah, where the snow was, where the snow yeah. wasn't covering. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, I forgot all about that. But yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, that sucked. But but to your point, we inherited that problem and we weren't 5, able to 000, go back to the seller and no. say, Hey, I want a five thousand dollar credit. No, that's a five thousand now if we did it during during the negotiation process, we, we could have gotten a credit probably. Because that's something else you can talk about. I mean, we we were negotiating we're for credit. Yeah. But you can negotiate for credits on a house too. And it's all so get good at negotiating and get good at going low. If somebody if you're selling a house and someone wants to negotiate credits with you, yep. I would I would advise you to not give in because they they've committed they've usually they have put down money on the house and they're they started the process of investing money in the house by inspections um compromise but yeah. don't give in right away and don't forget they're also calling you for a reason they're not going the traditional real estate agent route so they're calling you for a reason so they're open to a conversation yeah. at least I'm, you're talking about people that are, when you're buying i'm talking about when you sell a house at the end oh yes when you sell a house at the well, end and somebody asks for credits when when you're buying the house though too like if you negotiate the price and then you and then you do have an inspection yes if you're doing that yep and, and you, you stumble find, onto it yes then you can ask them for credits as well 100 percent. yeah that's we should talk about that as long as we're sitting here I, we're, we were wrapping up and we should talk about that you're right if you say it's going to be but you have to give your you have to set up up front to say my price will be one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. you know pending my inspection of the right. house now if they're committed to you now you build a relationship now you go out there and you find that there is a buried oil tank on the property you say look at that's going to cost me five grand to get rid of yeah and by the way if it's leaking, I have to get the EPA involved, and it could cost me twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Right. Oh, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find a number that makes sense for this on this, and then you say you'll have to deal with this with anybody that you deal right. with now, because now you know about it, and now you have to disclose it. Right. Now you have to disclose that, so you're gonna have to deal with that. So let's let's work through that. Right. And again, that's a negotiation, right? That's a negotiation. So get good at negotiating because you're gonna use it all through your life, and especially as a real estate investor. Buy low so you can sell and make your money at that time. That concludes this episode of the Fearless Future podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you click that like button and you don't want to miss anything. So turn on notifications and subscribe to our channel.